Hello everybody, my name is Farmer Phil and in today's video we have a demo. We have the Slurry Quip demo tractor and we are going spreading. We're going spreading a new farm now. We've 28 acres to cover, but we are going in this beautiful massy. And we are spreading. We're spreading the, some of the silage ground here. We are on folded 12 meter slurry quip dribble bar. We are in their demo unit. The reason it was the tractor and then now was my microphone was dead so I had to charge that and there was a bit of a panic to get out going and just get up and running because there's lorries drawn to us, two lorries drawn to us today and we need to make sure we got space for lorries to draw. There's a lot to get used to. It um, feels totally alien to me. Like I mean so alien I don't feel right. Probably doesn't help that I am under the weather as well but it just doesn't feel right. Wider it's different, everything is different and what, I suppose one of the biggest things is I don't have auto steer and I don't have GPS. I am basically trying to guesstimate, see where the 12 meter line is. I can just about see it there and then come along then and just go alongside that. How I would have used to have spread, but I haven't spread this way in two years. So we also have their unit here. If anyone who follows or watches the farm theory, Andrew, he makes these four slurry equips, so this is one of his units. So you can see we're getting 24,000 gallons an hour. That's what we've applied. That's how fast after we go on. One of the issues, that's 2.6 miles per hour. That's in kilometers. So I had to stick it into Google Converter to see what the speed I should be doing is. And then also then you have two electric solenoids there. You have two solenoids on these foot switches for swinging the front railer side to side because it is their front railer that swings side to side so what I usually do when I be rolling up I'd have to drive forward and back to bring the pipe left to right but with this the, the front railer goes left and right and then that's enough then for the pipe to then move left and right itself so you don't have to move so you don't mark the ground as much also as you can see I had to drop off the back railer because you have to drop off whatever your, your back for the wagtail to be able to work which that is probably my biggest mm, not just something I'm, I'm anyway keen on so it is just yeah I don't like that extra work that has to be done to be able to start spreading we're going to bring this outfit for I don't know how long I have it for but as long as I have it I we're going to be giving it a good out run there we're going to bring it a couple of jobs um, just to get used to it, see what we like, don't like, and we'll try and do a review then when it goes back. But this is the first job, this is the first outing. I get the drone up when we move fields. Um, the next field I'm doing is a wee bit, not a hilly, but it's, it's a bit undulating. So it'll test out with 12 meter what she's like for striking the ground. So I know what our own, the 10 meter, um, she strikes the ground a lot. So when you go that extra two meters wider, how much of an issue would that be? Because we do do some hilly ground out in Tom McConnell and in Ballycumber. That's one of my fears with going 12 meters. So it's, it's great to get the opportunity and big thanks to Slurry Cup for sending down their demo outfit. It's a great opportunity to see what we're missing out on by going 12 meter and how their outfit compares to what we have. The other thing that I feel like is going to catch me out, it's not that it might catch me out, I think it will catch me out, is I'm spreading on standard set of tires. I've never spread on a standard set of tires. I've only ever spread on a set of 47 inch tires and then we went to 1200s. But um, yeah, so I feel like that could catch me out on, on overestimating the travelability of narrower tires could catch me out. Wait and see how that works out. Trying to make some good, interesting content today. And um, yeah, so just folding up. First field done. We'll pull the pipe on out here. So, so we're just dragging out our pipe onto the next one. And then we'll put down pipe off the front to get the next bit done. And the gap we're going to be going through is over there on out to the next field, the bowl where the bulls have eaten. And then we're going on out and we're going to do a section of that big area. 
that's the plan. I'm gonna try and see can I watch my pipe coming in there. I can't really see that pipe coming in. That's not good. So I'm folding my arms now. So we're still getting air there. No idea how I'm pulling that. Right, I'm gonna have to ring your father Phil and see can he see what's happening so I don't end up pulling the pipe out from the road or it's gonna mess up a ram. But yeah, this is the next field, there's another silage field. It's eaten, the heifers ate this off, so they did. So it's next up for getting. I think there's 19 acres in here. And we are ready to rock and roll now in the next field. So unfolded, pipe down, just waiting on slurry. And yeah, we're ready to rock. So I suppose one thing, one field done into the next one. One of the things I kind of like is like, it's quite simple behind the tractor, you know, compared to what I'm used to. You have all the pipes and all that above you. It also keep your center of gravity low for doing the hills, for doing the, the hilly bits. Or, oh, um, yeah, I actually see the slurry in the pipe over there, so. It's just making its way around the corner, slowly but surely. So, um, yeah, we're gonna fire up the drone next. We'll get on these nice straight runs. We're putting it out at three and a half thousand gallons on this ground here. And then when we get on to, we're going to be doing some of the heavy grass, that owl matted stuff. I'm a little bit concerned that we may run out of grass for the cattle. So I'm going to put slurry on ahead of the cattle. The cattle will be two weeks maybe from eating it, maybe three weeks. And we're just going to put slurry on it. Someone said it might help rot the owl grass out of it and it'll provide a bit of nutrients for new grass that's trying to push up through it to, to come on ahead. That's the theory anyway, so we're gonna put, spread about nine acres or 10 acres of that 20 acre field, about the half of it. So that um, we're just, it's pushing things on a bit. And we're also gonna do where the bulls have cut, were, were on last. So, let's wait for pressure. We'll fire up the drone when we get going and we'll see what this looks like from the air. The one thing I will have to get used to now when I'm flying is I have to steer as well as fly the drone, which I haven't had to do spreading slurry in a few years, so that could be fun. We're baiting along here nicely. Still just getting used to driving on the right width, but I don't think I'm doing too bad. Oh, bit of rain at the minute. There's forecast for five mils, so it's nothing to spoil play or anything. We'll get the drone up eventually. It's a bit jockey and dreary. <coughs> I missed my opportunity getting the drone up. We went for, for dinner there because we're waiting on Larry's to bring us slurry because we haven't yet tried to agitate the tank because we have to lift slats to agitate the tank. If we lift slats, the likelihood is that we'll probably end up leaving them off, which isn't a safe thing to do. So we don't want to lift the slats till we're ready to put down slats or, or do something to just make it safe after we've it done. So our capacity is only you know, 15,000 gallons in one side, which lasts half an hour. So we're waiting on the lorries. Well, I think one's nearly seven, there's five and a half. But we're tipping away here the finest. This field is look pretty dry, like it's damn good. Next field out there may not be as dry. I know I get it done with the wide tires without any issues, but whether normal tires will work, wait and see. That's the thing. That is the thing. It's just, everyone's different. We're also spreading with five inch pipe, never spread with five inch pipe. And something I would like to try and get hinted because your output's higher with five inch pipe, you go five to four. Never spread with five before. And so far it's okay. A little bit of an issue with the stopping and starting that we have wait maybe five minutes for two load to come. It just means that when you stop, if, if you just don't, if the pipe just isn't right, and she gets a twist in it, and there's a bit of a job to get over. So that's the only thing that's a little bit annoying me about the five inch. Father Phil hates five inch, that's why we don't have any five inch. He used to have five inch back when nitrates and derogation and all that wasn't a thing, and he used to spread for, I think, eight piggeries. And it was a case of you put the pipe into the piggery and you spread everything he could reach within two and a half kilometers. And at that time he had a five inch pipe, or two five inch pipes, to try and get it out that far. And um, 
yeah, then when nitrates rules and that come in, then that, all that work stopped. And he actually abandoned the pipe because he hated him with a passion. He said it was the most dog ignorant thing he'd ever come across. So, anyways, keep tipping away here. It's slow going because of the width, but anyhow, I'd say another two runs and this will be done. That's the one thing though with this, you're taking 12 meters, two meters more than another. Like, to the hedge there is only, yeah, two runs I'd say. Fingers crossed. This old jockey day clears up a bit and we get the drone up. But we keep at it. We're just finished here and just getting ready to rejig the pipe. So I'm rolling up and as you can see, I'm moving this side to side. So that's what the steering ram steering is on the front link. So it's on these two pedals here. So that's right, that's left. So I'm just rolling up this pipe, then drag it back into the field behind me. So as it moves across then I can slide it back so it means you don't have to move the tractor so you're doing that little bit less damage on the ground so you can see it moving across there just like Daisy it's pretty damn cool so it is how it works Let's gather this up and we drag it back in yeah that's the steering on it so we're spreading away in the next field, still jockey. It is supposed to clear off in the next hour or so, so it shouldn't be too bad. Um, but the biggest thing I am noticing, no, it's a bit steamed up, don't want to dirty the windows, but you can see I am leaving a bit of a damage along there. And that's that's where I was, I was like, mm, will these wheels be good enough, or, or well not say good enough, but the difference between spreading on 1200 versus either 650s or 710s and I know I could spread that with the 1200s no matter whatsoever it wouldn't mark it and I'm doing a little bit of damage now I'm not concerned about the damage I'm doing because the plan for this field is to recede it get the disc arrow in take the tracks out of it we left a few in putting it leaving in the feeder trailer and get some fresh grass into it but the ground isn't dry enough the ideal situation would be to disc this Put the grass seed in, put the slurry on top of it, give that grass a push. But the ground's not dry enough to reseed. It's dry enough to put slurry on, and I travel it with the big tires without leaving a mark, not just with the narrower tires. That's, that's why I was a little bit concerned about, but I don't mind the marking because I will take it over. But the reason we're out here doing this field is because cattle are off about two weeks now, so it's just starting to green a little bit. There still is a lot of that old deadness to it, that old dead grass. Now I was told that putting slurry, especially pig slurry, on it would help kind of rot that back into the ground, that old dirty bit of, a, of a dead grass that's there. But the reason we're putting out the slurry is if the weather was to stay wet or wettish that we wouldn't get this receded for you know the next two weeks. If this dried up within a week, I'd come out to this car, we get the grass in it. But if it was to stay wet for the next two weeks or that, if I don't put this slurry out, this slurry will push on the grass that's coming and it'll give me grass. If the weather stays wet, there is a possibility that we could start to run out of grass. Now we still have 40 acres of that old dirty stuff to eat off. Um, with two batches up here now eating. But if things were to stay wet, we didn't plant out in this waiting for it to recede it. I'm just afraid if the worst case scenario we could get tight on grass but I know if I put slurry on this now in the space of two three weeks if I don't get receded I'll have an eating of grass here there'll be a move of grass here it might not be the best grass but it's grass all the same it'll fill bellies and it, it it'll do that's why we're putting the slurry out is to just push it on just in case get this done then we're going to move out on to the grass that hasn't been eaten and then we're going to cover about 10 acres of the big field um, for the same reason just to see what it helps so I was told putting it out on that owl stuff will rot that grass away and it'll encourage some it'll give that new grass or that fresh grass that's trying to grow through it a bit of encouragement to keep coming up through it give it a bit of oomph so 
Yeah. It's just, just starting to brighten a bit there now, so fingers crossed we might get the drone up. Fingers crossed. So we're moved on out into the big field as we want call it. I don't know how else you could call it. Um, bulls are still grazing that one in the air, strip grazing it at the minute. Seems to be working quite well, but it's really it's slowed down. But I suppose that's because we're buffer feeding them still, and you give them 10 yards, they graze that, and it takes about two days. But then they're getting the feeder trailer every two days, so it could be shooting ourselves in the foot maybe, but we're keeping the condition on them and that's all that really matters. Give them the last of it there yesterday. So I'd say three or four days and then they'll move on to one that's in behind that, then they'll be moving on out this way. But by the time they get to where I am now, it's going to be a minimum of two weeks. 24,000 gallons an hour and we have all the piping out. All the piping. So we're 1200 meters, it was why I was told it was on the machine, so it's 1200 meters out, and yeah, that's the one thing, if I did want to go further, now actually, I probably have enough of a loop of pipe in there, I could go across and do the next two fields in front of me, but I could be a bit tight. One thing you may be wondering why am I splashing it, there's a splash bit on this dribble bar, or on this umbilical system, it's quite high up, but there's one on it. And the reason you may ask why why would I splash it would be that you get the total coverage of that whole dead grass to rot it. But the reason I'm not splashing it, and Father Phil kind of wanted me to splash it, as I no, we dribble it. One, you get slightly more nitrogen now with your dribble slurry over your splashed. And two, it's just in case. If my estimations are wrong on how quickly it'll take the cattle to get from what they've finished, left the graze there, to come here, now I will be leaving about five acres not done in the other side of this field as just just in case but if it's dribbled and in a week's time two weeks time maybe I estimations are wrong and they need to come out here at least the grass isn't dirty and that they should be able to graze away whereas if I splashed it the grass will be dirty it could take three weeks for that to kind of piss off with itself but from working dribble bars for this long or like I think it's most commonly accepted you know you can be back in in 12 days grazing after dribbling because you're not dirty in the grass you're not dirty in all the grass now when it comes to this unit this is the first job I'm still trying to get used to it being slightly under the weather doesn't help because I like my creature comforts, I like ha how I have my auto steer, I like how I, you know, when in my own yoke I have everything. So there's a little bit of that. We have three jobs lined up to do with this. Now we can't use it on all the jobs we have for the next couple of days because this outfit, mostly the tractor and the amount of piping is, is the issue we have. It's some men we have to go to are on wet ground and they need the big tires not to do damage. As we've seen in the other field, I, I reckon spread that no bother, no, I left a mark. This I was leaving marks. That's why some jobs we have to go at the big tires. The other thing too, this is 1200 meters. 
we carry just under 1800 meters on our own system and we have a couple of jobs to do where I need all that piping so there's no point bringing this system to a job where I won't be able to get all the work done that the farmer wants done so we have three more jobs lined up it depends on when they take this back depends on how much I get done but we'll try and make one more video of it anyways on a review of what I think and that so far I love the front reeler this side to side thing oh game changer biggest thing is just the, the dropping on and off the reeler that yeah that just kind of gets to me a little bit but look I can't I'm only I've only been on it half a day so far so it's not really fair to give it a review yet so we'll leave that for later as for the tractor I think the livery the black and the orange and that is just epic I really really like the livery of this tractor hands down like I absolutely love it I think it looks bloody class so it does fair play to the lads it just looks on point it's bigger than the 6290 definitely but yeah we'll leave it for later but anyways that's the crack still drizzling away there was supposed to stop but we're getting work done and that's all that matters and that is us finished that is the field spread so I think my voice is deteriorating as the day goes on and there's about five acres left there so hopefully this does the job of rotting down the old scraw, the old grass and then trying to encourage new growth just on the blow now just gets all the sorry out of pipe straighten it up and start rolling up so yeah wasn't too bad a, a day now it's still bright still get another bit done And that is it, that is us rolled up and finished. One thing I will say is I like my big wheels because you can definitely know after the ground has been spread, the big wheels usually rarely ever leave a mark unless you're on really, really wet ground. This is leaving that mark here and there traveling back across the wet, the, the spread ground. So okay, that's it. But anyways, look, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Leave in the comments down below what you think of delivery of the tractor. I really like it. But anyways, that is it for me. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Videos every Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday. Good luck.